Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to occur to one when one embarks on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I make video games. I also coach about uh, collaboration, creative process, teach workshops too. How are you doing, Jersey? Doing okay. Good to see you again. It's been a couple weeks. We had a rebroadcast last week while we did some new stuff with the website, which we'll talk about later on in the episode, I'm sure. Um, but it occurs to me that it is, we're closing in on the end of September, Rob. Hmm. That, okay, yeah. right. So the the leaves start to change in the northern hemisphere, right? So we get this. Uh, oh yeah, pumpkin spice comes back. That's the thing. <laughs> That's right. People, uh, yeah, pumpkin spice. Incidental pumpkin spice. I like the pumpkin spice. I don't mind it any time of the year. And, and and the Halloween advertisements. Too soon? Not not soon enough. Depends on where you stand in the world, right? Those uh, Halloween adver- advertisements that are like creepy that go like. Happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock at the end. I'm so- <laughs> Have you seen those two? They're freaking me out, man. <laughs> I don't think they're on the up and up. <laughs> uh, but also, October usually brings about the season of creative challenges. What are we talking about? Inktober, NaNoWriMo. What else is... Uh, is 24-Hour Comp Day in October? It is, isn't it? Uh, yeah, 24-hour comic day is, wow. yeah, that's coming up. What other ones are in there? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, I mean, there's, there's essentially, there's things that are like the, the big scale ones, but I, but you run into, you know, a lot of people are, I, I don't know what it is, but, but it's this, this time of year, is it the fall harvest? Is it the, uh, you know, the, the habit of some events starting to draw enough attention, get critical mass and say like, that's cool, but I would rather do art sound off or what have you. Um, and, and so I, you see like, you know, smaller scale, uh, creative challenges pop up too, but I think the biggies, especially like, so NaNoWriMo was, was the, I mean, one of the, the big month long ones that I, I think sort of made creative challenges like more popular, I think, but, uh, Inktober is a phenomenon. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a, you know, like hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions participate in it. It's, it's a, um, it's a whole different level in my opinion. Inktober, which we're talking about a, uh, daily challenge where you do 31 ink drawings in 31 days. Uh, it's, I think created by Jake Park, Jake Parker, inktober.com. Um, if I remember right, it was largely just about like, as we move towards using more digital technology, let's reconnect with, you know, paper and pen again, uh, just at least for one month. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, this, it was supposed to be just like this, this fun thing where you just check in every day with something where just to, just to commit ink to paper. Uh, and then it's, as, as it turned into a phenomenon, the phenomenon, there became all these different themes and prompts. And we ourselves have found our own ways of hacking the challenge to explore different constraints and uh, uh, objectives through through the ritual of checking in on something every day, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's our topic this week, is like, what are we thinking about in 2019 for hacking the season of creative challenges, whether it's Inktober, whether it's Art Sound Off, whether it's NaNoWriMo, or any of the various other ones that pop up. Why they all happen in the fall? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of uh, speculation or uh, research on that subject, but it's something that happens. And it's, I think it's also become part of our annual ritual on this show is to like investigate how do we think about this thing, check in every year. How do we, what's our relationship with creative challenges? Do we, do we engage, do we not engage? If we engage, do we just do it, you know, um, pure vanilla Android? <laughs> you know, no touch whiz UI on top? Or do we add our own... Um, uh, flavor of of uh constraints to the challenge to and and if so why so did did i I frame it up uh definitely that is a framed topic let's let's jump into the frame and see where it leads us all right well then that calls for some music to let us know that we're heading into the first section of the show 
Okay. Uh, yeah, so where do we want to begin? How about we talk about, for those who are new to the show, for those who are just checking it out for the first time, because we have been the last several episodes streaming on twitch.tv slash lean into art. So there might be people who are just casually walking by. What are these two guys talking about? We It's an hour long show. We usually spend the first half talking about what it looks like when we're doing this thing. The second half is like how we think about this thing. So in the spirit of what it looks like, what are some of the things we have made over the last X amount of years with these various creative challenges. You want to go first, Rob? Uh, okay, sure. Um, so, I mean, some of it's 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 just increased output and practice. That's where it's like I want to put more attention to this thing, even though like at, at times I was working on, uh, you know, like every every year is a different context in your life for a creative challenge. Uh, I you know was. I started really getting into these when I was trying to level up making my comics and was actively publishing a, a comic called Art Geek Zoo. Still out on the web at artgeekzoo.com. But uh, let's see. So sometimes I wanted to branch off from the, my, the main story of that comic and also look ahead at ideas and get a you know, deeper feel for different characters and stuff. So that took a few different forms where 24-hour comic day um, it's, it's this, you know, it's one day. It sure is a disruptive day though. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, your normal flow is out the window. If you're, if you're jumping in both feet and doing the, doing it sort of the create a page an hour style, 24 hour comic day. And, um, so I actually finished a couple of sort of, um, you know, couple small stories. One story was, was, a was a flashback toward my main comic art geek zoo. And that was called metal or the girl. The basic idea being like, um, this, this, you know, this young penguin who's in high school is figuring out, um, commitments, right. Commitments to creative projects and also relationship. How do you, how do you navigate that in a 24 page comic? Um, that was, that, uh, so I was, I was glad to get that done. It's nice to get, you know, other finished discrete works out in the world. Right. So that happened. But then I also made one called, um, uh, no remorse river horse, which later became, I, I took the same visuals and then I added, uh, because there was almost no, um, like text symbols in, in it. So then I added narrative prose to every page. And so then it flowed kind of like a, like a poem. Um, poetic story of, and it's called Toughest Hippo Goes to Bunny Town in that version. So, so it became a mini anyway. comic when you were done. Yeah. That's yeah, worth, well, let's put a pin in that too, because I want to, I want to note this is that uh, Toughest Hippo Goes to Bunny Town was not the original iteration of the thing, right? It was something else. It was right. no, no remorse river horse. And then it became something else, I think a couple years later, if not more than that, right? Totally. Yeah. It was material that I have in my back catalog that I was able to, um, you know, pick up again, which yeah, I'm, yeah, definitely starting to get better at, at doing from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I've been thinking about that with my own, that that's been like one of the, um, guiding ideas of, as I think about, this season of creative challenges and how I might interact with it. Um, one that I have from 2015 is uh, I did a series of ink drawings that were inspired by the backs, uh, the card backs of action figures from the late seventies to through the mid eighties. This idea of like, you have like your, the, the toy you're trying to sell. Like, so in this case it was like a, um, well, let me let me try to frame this up better. So I was taking the characters from the the Boulder and Fleet world that I've been writing stories about, and I was imagining them with a uh, exciting variety of accessories and play sets and vehicles, like the like the toy lines did when we were kids. And it would show the y your beloved action figure interacting with those. So here's like pickles with like what are those things called? The tur oh Turbo Fist pickles. So it's like another action figure. Remember like the '90s Batman figures where it'd be like Night Flight Batman, Lightning Strike Batman. Uh, Tuesday, T Taco Tuesday Batman. It was just always just the same Batman figure, but it was just like a different accessory and a different color scheme on him. It's like thinking mm -hmm. like that. So the idea was like, I'm going to do an ink drawing every day where I try to come up with an exciting action figure accessory for some of my characters. 
do a fun drawing of them interacting with that and come up with a line of dialogue or a, a, a descriptive line of text like they would always put on the card backs and see if I can do 31 of those. Um, and I did. Oh, and then the other part of the creative challenge for myself was, was like, I, I get to use crayons. I'm going to use crayons, but I only get to use, I think, a maximum of two colors. So you get like one like highlight color and then one like secondary color. So like in the case of this one, you got the orange background and her green hair. Right. Hmm. This vehicle is called the Hora Bull. Right. Because they, 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 there was always really bad puns for the vehicle names back then, too. Anyway, um, so, but uh, I did the drawings in Inktober of 2015. I don't think this got collected until 2017 or 2018. 2017, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you had a bit of a product development longer arc there. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I don't remember whether or not even considered collecting the drawings into a book until later i can't remember for sure but eventually the idea occurred to me that well actually you know they're just the right aspect ratio that if i print if i do it as a two up on a standard comic book size and order it through a print on demand place like kablam i could just cut them in half just you know get them printed as like so i'm getting wow. double the amount of comics and it, it was just like a a, a a cheap cost effective way to make like an extra thing to have on my table to like highlight more of the type of art that i make um, by no means does it like fly off my tables at shows. Nobody's like, oh, thank God, a, a collection of Inktober drawings. <laughs> but it does catch people's eyes and they flip through it. And, you know, it gives me an opportunity to talk with them a little bit about the, the Boulder and Fleet universe. So um, so that's one that I did. Um, Quick question on mm -hmm. the so you so that is sort of um, the like traditional American comic size and that gets cut in half horizontally. Mm -hmm. uh, what what did you use to cut that in half? Well, in the case of Kablam, I just actually asked them to do it. Um, but oh. um, so what I did is I said, like, hey, don't staple them. Just cut them for me. And then I'll staple them myself at home. Because if you because if you did this at a standard comic book size, it'd be two staples, which means you only have one staple per half, which would be a problem. So I was like, so when I made the order, I was like, here's the here's the PDF files. Could you please come in half? But don't staple them. Just mail them to me unstapled. And so then I took my long arm stapler which every cartoonist worth their salt should have when most of us do um 25 bucks at office max or staples they used to be 12 rob 12 when i bought mine in the old days i and i i caught myself telling my students when i was telling them to get these i'm like oh they're only like 12 bucks at staples yeah in 1994 they were now they're 25 uh so anyway. <laughs> uh, i know i was totally grandpa simpsoning it right <laughs> oh no i mean i <laughs> Yeah, I, I get shocked at the price of staplers at least. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the artist's plight. This is the yeah. sticker shock at staplers. Um, but anyway, so the, yes, I, I assembled them myself uh, afterwards. Um, ah, cool. Thank you. Because I mean, that seems like a pretty clever hack on a hack there. So <laughs> <laughs> It's just hacks all the way down. Um, another creative challenge that we haven't talked about in a while and it doesn't happen in the fall it typically happens in march is mini comic day and this will come as no surprise to anybody who's listened to the show for long enough that i'm a big fan of mini comic day as a matter of fact if you're going to be in the columbus area next year march of 2020 we're doing mini comic day again in columbus i'm really excited about it and what it is is um it's only eight hours so it's like 24 hour comic day, comic day but it's truncated down to eight hours where the goal is to make an eight page mini comic in that eight hours so it, it's it's making it in my opinion a much more manageable thing and um the other goal is is that at the end of the session everybody prints their mini comics and trades them so there's also a production element to it and a mini comic that i made in 2013 for mini comic day is some fish don't have teeth which was a uh it, what was the fun thing about this comic was I created these two fish wrestler characters in my sketchbook and I said to myself, I, literally hour one of the day, I said, what if Fleet, the little yellow bird from Boulder and Fleet, um, before she met Boulder, she was a wrestling manager for this tag team of wrestling fishmen. And I started this page, I started drawing it, writing the dialogue, and I had no idea how it was going to end. And that was, that was a fun, a fun leap of faith. Because, you know, 2013 was, that was like, what, six years ago, you know? It's like, I, I was I was 
skilled, but you know, I, I now having done a lot of these creative challenges, I would feel a lot more confident than I did at this point. And when I was doing this book, it, it was a very nerve wracking eight hours. And my, and I actually remember my, my arm, I think it, uh, I did something to my arm through drawing for, you know, that eight hours straight that intensely. So I didn't mm. do my stretches. I didn't do my stretches. Um, that's important. So like part an aspect of the, there's a health hack aspect of, of all of these creative challenges. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, you know, ergonomics and, you know, the physicality of it. And, you know, even logistically and emotionally and all that stuff, it means like childcare sounds way easier to arrange for a mini comic day than 24 hour comic day, for instance. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, so you got oh, another one? Cool. So yeah, fish don't have teeth. Um, but I noticed you said some fish don't have teeth. I, I amended the cover because like, so the, the final line of the comic was, um, I'll just spoil the whole book. Uh, in the end, uh, the heel wrestler does this trick where he gets, he gets the, one of the fish wrestlers to accidentally bite his arm. Well, actually it is an accident, but he puts his arm in the way of the fish's mouth and he's like, Oh ref, he bit me. And so then like the fish get disqualified against the heel and uh -huh. fleet yells back at them. Like fish don't have teeth. How can he bite you? Kind of thing. These fish don't have teeth. So, but then I, I took it to conventions and was selling it and people would see the cover. They'd be like, fish don't, and they'd go, you know, some fish have teeth. And I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> it's a conversation starter. And then I'm like, after you to correct me. And then after the 80th, well, actually some fish do have, I was like, okay, guess what? And I made a new cover where I put parentheses above the fish. of it. some fish don't have teeth. These fish don't have teeth. <laughs> So, yes, maybe that's a tip. Put something on your cover that is factually not entirely accurate just to uh, elicit that. You know, and I don't think any one of those people ever bought the book. They were just happy to be have the opportunity to let somebody else know that they don't they're not being uh, quite as clear as they could be. You need to put a sign for instance. OK, this is for free. You can have this. You can say, uh, what, what's the price of that mini comic on your table? Uh, three bucks. Three bucks. All right. Corrections, six bucks. So, <laughs> would you like too many comics or would you like to correct this one? <laughs> That's good. Oh my God. That, that, is, that is so passively hostile, right? It's like, <laughs> I'm here and I'm smiling. It's not a kind smile. <laughs> um, Don't push well, me. I'm going to charge double. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's it can, good. It can be a, a prop sign where it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pull it after they correct me. Oh, the, the price just went up like Giesel and Popeye. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So more more creative challenges, more output. Yeah. All right. We um like okay. It's been a theme. We revisit this and talk about it from time to time. Um, I'm still pretty enthusiastic about creative challenges. I have, um, I had an approach where if, if I was tempted at all, I would just kind of leap at it and leap at and leap and leap every, every time. Even if I didn't have a great plan, wasn't set up well, gave myself a weird constraint, what have you, because, you know, the, the learning was going to be this, this um, exciting aspect, no matter what happens. I still feel that way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a little less, severe about it though uh but i'm saying that because i have a huge list of creative challenges i've i've explored and whatnot and i it's, it's only and yet i look at it and i think wow i really mellowed out because i haven't really kept this pace up so anyway um because i look back inktober i've done a bunch of times um 20 yeah like i think i took one off uh you know, I, I like that you put in the notes, 2017, you challenged yourself not to do Inktober. <laughs> which, which is silly, but, but it's true because I, th because I, um, like once, once I started the, that, I'm, I'm like, well, it's an annual tradition, but then I'm mm -hmm. like, Man, I don't, I don't, I didn't feel it for a variety of reasons that year. So I took a break and, uh, but it wasn't easy actually to take a break, uh, because it's, you know, it's this big, big event, a lot of people there. So, uh, or, you know, even if I'm not, I don't feel like I was in the mainstream of the big event and the whatever, the, the most traffic, it's still, um, you know, it's a, it's a recurring thing. And it's, it's like, oh yeah, I'm someone who does this. And then for a year I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, 
it wasn't as it wasn't as straightforward as just saying, well, yeah, skip it and then don't think about it. Of course, I thought a lot about it um, before and after. Uh, so I did a few things. A lot of that that event and and various other events are about development and product development for me. And some of it's very long cycle product development. Um, stories that don't have an urgent deadline, story and and games that don't have a have an urgent deadline. But I'm developing I'm developing characters. So uh, like last year, Inktober, it was all about game assets and character d- designs um, toward making game assets, and that was uh, primarily about Two Pizza Team and that world. Uh, Two Pizza Team is in my notebooks. It's both a game and a and a comic. I did finish one mini comic uh, for that, but that didn't really come out of a creative challenge. I just, you know, worked to get that done. Regular projects can be creative challenges too. <laughs> Put it on top of your... That's a good banner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm trying to think what's an interesting thing that I did do as far as developing a product. Um, because even though, so there was, there was one called 30 characters in 30 days. That was a November challenge. I don't think it's still going on. Um, Tyler James is the one who kicked that off, uh, ages ago, maybe back in 2010. Uh, so that one, the unblocking project, that was one of them, you know, where I, I, I took on a, a 365 day challenge in 2015 to um, make and share a new drawing every day. I explored tons of different things over that year. I still want to mine that data to be like, what's in, what was in my brain that year and come up with some kind of chart, but haven't done it yet. Uh, and, but all of it, there's, there's a bunch of things that, that feed into uh, game design stories, uh, specific illustrations that are just one off. And also, um, what was the last one? Even like other zine ideas. Um, so unblocking was, uh, you know, I, I would have these, these themes and and uh, phases and for, for a few days. And I did like uh, a whole bunch of facial expressions and I think, well, this now that I've done this, this could be a product kind of like you did with your, um, your hypothetical, um, back. Yeah. The, a toy the, the, illustration book. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to think of what, so I think art sound off and the four hour book cover challenge are two that like I produced something right. That, that is really the four hour book cover challenge was, which we podcasted about. Um, I was trying to figure out how I could make time to, to do a quick illustration commission and um, squeeze it in a bunch among a bunch of other things just to quickly get it done one day on the weekend and I came up with a with a method to rapidly iterate and go through a bunch of ideas strengthen the ideas get the composition figure out the details and, and the the aesthetics of it um, in four hours and mm-hmm. um, yeah it's probably linked to that one um, choosing enough limitations made, made that made that possible and I'm trying to remember, and that's, it's been a couple of years since I've done that. How far did I get in those four hours? I think I got pretty far, but I, it wasn't toward like, I think it was sort of the, the, the rough development and what would inform like another couple hours of work to f- actually finish the illustration, something like that. I think that's how I far I got. I don't want to misadvertise the like, yeah, got pretty far in four hours though. That's what I remember. But then last year, Art Sound Off, I did, um, uh, I did a lot of sort of content development and working toward uh, like future articles, maybe ebooks and um, workshops. So mm-hmm. I did like a, an 11 part series call, that I called UX for All. And I would take some aspect of the discipline of user experience design and my experience with it and explored it extemporaneously just went for it and that was a pretty a pretty interesting exploring generative process that um i mean i've i've benefited a lot from not a direct product like the book cover but but it's uh it's it's a pretty rich mind that i'm that i'm still benefiting from so anyway that's like a quick overview of things and output from that's channel. a good idea no i i think that's it's good to get a like a do like a speed round where we could like do some broad strokes on ways we've thought about these creative challenges I, similar on a similar tack 
last year's Art Sound Off, I did a draft of an uh, audiobook where in the two weeks leading up to Art Sound Off, I wrote out an outline of like, what is everything I know about how I teach comics workshops and how would I structure that information? And then can I chunk it out over 31 days? And then I did, and I did a 31 installment series called uh, How to Lead a Comics Workshop, which I, it, I very explicitly from the outset said, this will be a way for me to commit to audio it, it opening draft at like a minimum viable product of a audiobook that I could edit down and still haven't done, but I have a master file, which is, I forget how many hours it is. It's, it's a lot of hours <laughs> of audio. Uh, it's not insubstantial, but it wouldn't require that much editing because I edited it on the fly while it, as I was doing each installment, I was taking out like the weird pauses and stuff. But um, other ones I've done is uh, in, what year was this? Was this 2016? Yes, it was 2016. I did for Inktober a 24 page mini comic called um, A Friendly Game, which the way I hacked the game was because I mean, a 24 page mini comic on top of my regular workload was it was incompatible. So what I did was is I thumbnailed it in the two weeks ahead of Inktober and I just inked over the thumbnails. So I printed out the thumbnails in blue and then uh, hand lettered it, which I don't do all that often. So it's so I literally only had an hour to work on each page. Um, I think in some cases I went like an hour and 15 minutes, but for the most part, I kept it at an hour of inking per page, which was not the easiest thing in the world on some of these pages, right? Like some of them. Dude, I mean, seriously. So one thing I'm observing is you've created some interesting finished products through your your 24-hour and 30-day and et cetera. Uh, that's, that's been a that's theme impressive. of... That's been a theme of, of my hacks for the game is like can i make something that is reproducible out of this thing can i it, but going back i mean like in 2014 i did inktober in my sketchbook and and that was let's do character development let's do character and like using your term asset generation for because i was getting ready to do uh mining for trouble my my full color comic i did at boulder and and so it was like let's do care let's draw the characters doing lots of things together, interacting with one another. And that was the, the creative challenge. It was not to create a shippable thing, but more to do some um, pre-visualization for the thing that I was going to write in the coming months. Um, but since then, yeah, uh, the, the, the last year's was um, Baron Von Baer and the Case of the Cursed Cuckoo, which is an eight-page mini-comic. So what I learned from, from um, a friendly game a 24 page book was like, whoo, that was tough. <laughs> that was really hard. And I'm glad I finished it. And I shipped it. And I'm, I'm very pleased with the result. I was like, Hey, let's, let's do that. But like, let's focus a little bit. Let's make it more sustainable and let's raise the quality level just a little bit if we can. And so I did an eight page story where I broke out, I, I thumbnailed it and then figured out how many panels per day I would have to do to break it into 31 chunks. Mm. So, so day one was like these two panels, panels one and two. Day two was panel three right here. Day three was panel four, right? So I got to spend a little bit more time on the pages. I think they look a little bit nicer. Um, but uh, it, but it, at the very least, they didn't consume my life the way this did um, in terms of, you know, stress. So it, this was this was like the the... How how did you say it in the old days, Rob? Is like, is it difficult? Is it probably not a good idea? Let's go do it, right? That was the the spirit behind doing a friendly game, and then uh, having gone through that and come out the other side, like with my hair burnt a little bit on this side and like this side, of my face is like a little bit scratched up. I'm like, okay, we did that. Now let's do it so that I don't come out quite so beat up, right? And so I did the more manageable version of it, but it still had its own creative challenges because I was writing a brand new story about like a character that I've been thinking about since like 2002. Um, and finally committing the idea to paper was super scary. Um, so, but yeah, so like for, for me in recent years, in like the last five years, I would say I've been, had my eye on, can I make a shippable reproducible thing out of this? Um, and now I get to 2019 having gone through those things. I'm like, well, what would I, how would I hack the game now? What would I do differently? Um, how do I make it feel fresh for me? So I'm not just like, do I want to just ship another mini comic? Well, is that, is that, you know, satisfactory? Maybe, maybe that's all I want to do. Or do I want to, you know, 
look at some other ways to play with it. Um, and I feel like that's a good segue to maybe take a break and talk about like, well, what are some objectives out of creative challenges in a broad sense to help us understand what the landscape of our choices are? Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Like uh, okay. taking a fresh look at that, and uh, yeah, I'm really curious to hear where you're where you're going to go this year. Um, because yeah, <laughs> so am I. So <laughs> Actual, it's like you've you've faced it more like a more like a business than I have, honestly. Where mm. for me, it's 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 been like a um, like a learning gym and raw product material, but not refined product material. So very mm. interesting difference there. Um, yeah, let's let's explore that in, in the next. All right. So in about a minute and a half, we'll come back and talk about like what what are all what are some objectives that we see when we think about what a cre creative challenge could be, and what are some of the different things you might want to be leveling up on? Like what are what are our options for leveling up when we're taking on creative challenges? But before we do that, we got to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people happen to be the folks who support us on Patreon, Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website what is it what is patreon well if you haven't heard of it you know what there's gonna be somebody who hasn't heard of it yet it's a way it's it's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote it's like you can contribute a dollar a month you subscribe for a dollar a month you can cancel at any time so you could do just like a one-time contribution if you wanted to just cancel at the end of the month but you could if you want to subscribe for as little as a dollar a month it helps make the show more sustainable and i want to thank five people who've been doing exactly that first up david say Thank you, David, for believing in us and what we do. You can find David Say on Twitter, at Dave Say. And thank you to Stephen Stone Bush. Thank you, Stephen, for believing in us and what we do. It means a lot to us. And good to be curious. Thank you, good to be curious. You can find them on Twitter, at good to be curious. And Catherine Sugru. Thank you, Catherine, longtime supporter of the show. You can find Catherine on Twitter at K-A-T-S-O-O-G-R-O-O. -O -O. Get it? Katsu Gru. And finally, the mysterious K. Thank you for believing in us and what we do, K. Uh, if you can join them at patreon.com slash leanitoart, where you will find all the shows we make, including the extra leans, the shows we only record for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread. We can talk about whatever you want. It's patreon.com slash leanitoart. Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. It's yeah, it's so supportive. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, how about some more? There we go. Just keep the intensity going. Now we're in the, the second half of the show where we talk about in, in, as intensely as possible. We think about like why and uh, how we think about these topics. Um, why? Why hack the game, Rob? Why, why do it? Uh, okay. So the taking a creative challenge at its, at its face value, um, I suppose it's, it, uh, it's fine. It's an experience. It's a container for some kind of, um, you know, some kind of event and effort that, that you'll put in or what have you. But then I think hacking it is about, um, it's kind of like, uh, I really admire when when someone get, makes a clever costume. Like when they go to an event, put on you know, go you go to a, a Halloween gathering or what have you, and and you just can tell someone who's like just they have a vision and a reason and ideas and and, and they execute and they're they're like their voice is showing up in, in a way where I'm like you know I just. <laughs> I'm enthusiastically here, but I'm not on that level. And yeah, yeah, I, I was at uh, the the He Man convention in Anaheim, California, last month, and they have a costume contest at the show. And there was there was like this guy in this magnificent trap jaw costume. I mean, he looked great. The mouth moved. He had the big robot arm and everything. He just looked fantastic. And then in walks this other guy dressed as this character named Oculus from the New Adventures of He-Man series. And Oculus was like this armored dude with just like a giant eyeball for a head, just like one big eyeball resting on like this little like neck piece and oculus comes around the corner and there's the big eyeball but he had it affixed to like a harness on his head so he could turn his head and the eyeball would look around at us as he was walking down the aisle right and like just that little thing it was like a little tiny thing that he did right but it made everybody go oh <laughs> when he was walking and he got first prize right so it's like that kind of thing is that what you're talking about yes <laughs> Thank you for, yeah, expanding that one because it was, uh, you know, so showing up at, um, 
you know, for, for a creative challenge, pick anyone, right? We're not just, I know Inktober is an, and is an obvious one, but like, what, what am I, why are you going to, to it? Right. What are you going to, you know, you can get more out of it than, than, um, than the default settings basically. Um, yeah. And it's, it's optional. All more, it. more or yeah. other, but also digging, digging into more why you would want to do this and, and incorporating that like into mm -hmm. your approach that, um, yeah, I, th I, I feel like I got more out of, for instance, comparing my past experience. I've done Ink Inktober through, uh, I tried the, um, the draw Halloween prompt, right? Mm. Draw Halloween, draw Halloween month, what have you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I'm going to combine that with Inktober. I don't have to, I don't, that's, that's lower stress for me, right? But that lower stress for me was also not as meaningful because now I don't really have as many original ideas and characters and, and, um, um, like so raw solutions in the rough kind of thing that that can be refined and honed so yeah i'm not as far along with with other potential projects basically yeah i i think both of us i a thing that's worth acknowledging or like shining a light on is like we, we have a bias toward wanting to use these creative challenges to benefit our ongoing business work, whether it's developing products or generating, uh, generating assets to feed into new products. Um, although, I mean, 10 years ago, I said on my own self-imposed creative challenge, not dissimilar from the unblocking project where I was, I sat down with a brush pen and I said, I want to learn this thing. How do I do it? Well, if I commit to one ink drawing a day, for however long I can maintain it, you know, and I don't remember how long I went, but like over that time and, and, and I said, well, what am I going to draw? Well, let's just draw things that are fun and easy to draw. It's like if I'm, if I'm fighting the drawing, then I'm not going to be learning the tool. So let's just focus on things that are, that come very easy to you. So you're not fighting that battle. All you're fighting is how does this tool work? Right? So I, I made my own, my own set of constraints to help me navigate using this tool. Um, so that that is a segue into talking about like yeah like maybe it's you want to learn a you want to level up or acquire a new skill right mm -hmm. it's um yeah and, and let's see so being uh so being being part of the creative challenge is it it adds this um maybe urgency it adds some kind of feeling right some kind of purpose and meaning that's beyond the leveling up um, where you can you know, just adding that, that, that feedback measure, it's almost like, um, you ever hear of smart goals? So mm -hmm. was it uh, simple, measurable, attainable, um, R <laughs> I can't remember what smart goals stand for. Repeatable, for replicable, uh, smart goals. Uh, that's the problem with acronyms. All right. So. <laughs> Let's see. It's uh, excuse me. Here, almost there's. Oh, specific. I'm sorry. Specific, measurable, assign, assignable, realistic, and time, mm. time related or assigned. So it's uh, yeah. There's a feedback loop there, right? Um, and it kind of reminds me in a way of of um, it's like what? Why would you add if you say, well, I'm going to learn a thing. And then you just go about it when you go about it. That's fine. But if you say, I'm going to learn a thing and I'm going to do it in this recurrence, right? So now you've got this feedback loop, this mechanism that's more, um, it's, it has this in, engagement loop to it. You know when it's happening, when it's not happening. And, uh, and then doing that in a giant group. I mean, it was, now there's a social part of it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so yeah. In, well, yeah, yeah actually, th we see this in other aspects of life. Like next weekend, I'm doing a 5K. And like there's couch to 5K. Like there's a routine of strength building and endurance building exercises you do on a regular basis. And as a matter of fact, the couch to 5K app, if you skip it for a couple of weeks, it says like, hey, dude, you missed like two weeks. You might want to go back a lesson because you might have lost some of the gains that you made, right? And then why do I go do a 5K? To do it with a community, right? To do it with a group of people who all have a similar agenda in that we're celebrating health and exercise for this other cause, right? Raising money for another cause. Um, 
so there is like this this there's a regularity there is a routine and an accountability aspect and there's also a, a doing it with other people aspect that comes out of it as well absolutely so yeah i mean so learning and leveling up um and it's it just it makes it it makes it a bigger i don't know there's there's more energy into in it uh maybe the commitment is more um yeah urgent compelling so that versus filling your time with something else um mm -hmm. so yeah i mean you, you mentioned developing a new product we've talked you know we've talked a lot about that uh i i and i think that that there's product to what level of finished are you working on the conceptual aspect of it or are you trying to make that concrete finished thing that is close to shippable if not shippable where you know it can go to the printer you can upload it to your website or and and or your etsy store what have you what where's you know where what threshold are you trying to get to as far as the level of development of it because you can um you can go very minimal and uh like maybe you're testing ideas like you mentioned uh like minimum viable products mm -hmm. um that implies there's some kind of yeah some kind of shipping of a complete thing and something you're trying to learn through that you know shipping of it you know, I, I could see something along the lines of like, and somebody's probably done this, but like 31 pitches in 31 days, right? Where it's like, I'm going to come up with concepts for 31, like I'm going to sort of brainstorm 31 book ideas. I'm sure somebody's done this before. I can't be the first to think of this, but like I could see that as being a, a form of MVP, um, hmm. right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're, uh, it's, you, I don't, Ooh, let me try this. So Dave say, I remember some at some point has done, let's see, challenge months. Oh, he did. He uh, did. He did like like brainstorming product design um, where he was doing like a new product uh, idea every day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's done that a couple times. So, right. I mean, that's and and he has a fantastic blog at davidsay.com. He really does where he shares that kind of thing he, he works on. He thinks really hard about what he works on. <laughs> he does. And I, I love it. Oh, so, me too. Yeah, I, can, I, I eat it like poi. Just, just big handfuls of the stuff. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. So, right. Um, the, the other aspect of it for me is, is feeling um, comfortable in my skills. So, like, getting practiced and, and having it so that feeling in practice to me is, is a very different situation of like, yeah, I might be confident in a skill, but am I sort of warmed up and ready to execute with that skill? And, um, you know, it's, you know, I like a lot of different, I like making in different media and stuff. So there's always something I'm not warmed up in. <laughs> and yeah. th sometimes that's what I'll, I'll introduce is like, this is going to be my media for this creative challenge. Like it, it was a long, it, it had been a long time since I did, did much with ink wash. And so at least the first few inktobers uh, of a couple of years back, I did huge ink washes uh, and it was neat to pl practice with that and feel like, oh, okay, I got the procedure. I know where I want to set my tools. I know how I want to set up and I want to tape off the drawing and, and I know where all my stuff is. And, and anyway, it just, all those little things add up to, um, if, if they're, if you're in practice, there's less friction than, than if you're not. And that's, that can be fun. Yeah, actually. Yes. I think that's another thing that I get out of it, uh, as much as the product development is the sense of having a, like the routine of it and having this daily, your, your, you're, it hasn't been that long since you've last done this activity, right? And so, the, and and then also the the action of doing it for the pure sake of practice. We've talked about this in the show with Brandon Dayton in the past. That he he calls it like the monastic approach. Why do we pray? Because we pray, you know. Like, but like take it to like actually talking about creating stuff and drawing stuff. It's like, why do you do it? It's like you do it to do it, and that is a reason to do it, right? Like, it doesn't have to be that. Well, I'm doing it to be famous. I'm doing it for this goal. I'm doing it for this ultimate end. You can also just do it to do it, and that's something that I think is 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 not. It's it's worth acknowledging that that is a benefit of doing a creative challenge as well. Is like um, focusing on the notion of 
putting yourself into that space every day um for the for the that is exactly what the unblocking project was for me mm. I, I was like i really don't want to feel like it's a crossing a chasm level event in order to just share something creative publicly right yeah 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 okay i do podcasts and whatever i've done that but like there's kind of this less and less creative work in my feed that I was sharing. And I was like, I'm going to do this every day just to do it. Sometimes I had other insights or a point or bigger, more development or less development, but the main, you know, heartbeat of the unblocking project was just, just do it, get it out there. That's right. it. It could be considered funny that here's two guys who say we think hard about this stuff. So you will too. Also advocating, yeah, but there's times that don't think about it and just do, just perform the action, right? I would, I would bridge those two ideas by saying that like the thinking gets you to the point where you can just be, just be the action, right? And then but the practice also gets you to just be the action. And but how do you maintain that by being the action? <laughs> <laughs> anybody who's ever taught a sport or a martial art will tell you that right like there's like a drilling that happens and that's what helps you maintain that connection with the action so that you don't have to have all this intellectual grunt work to get you to the point where you can actually do it and there's something that is very um, energizing and reassuring about just doing the action and just letting it be what it wants to be oh I had there was this marvelous quote I put it in my ETP I think no, okay. I didn't. I wrote it down on a, another piece of paper. But, oh, I went to a Carol Tyler workshop at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum. And she said, oh, let's see if I can get the quote. It was like, give yourself permission to be where you're at. You know, and I thought, you know, that is something that creative people need to hear more often. And we need to remind ourselves of more often is that because we're so, we can be so goal oriented, so goal focused and so much about like, well, what's going to come of this? Uh, that maybe it's just about being where you're at right now and just experiencing that because that is part of the deal of being a creative person. It's not just about what you make. It's about what you experience in the act of the making of the thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I, I like that because I mean, I, it's something that when you are, um, I don't know when you're, when you're learning or sharing or trying to, you know, you're working with someone else. I mean, it's, it's a great thing to keep in mind is meet them where they are at. And so, mm -hmm. but why not extend that to yourself also? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's so funny that like when she said it, I was like, ah, oh, and I was like hastily writing it down. Like <laughs> it was, it, it felt profound, but at the same time, it was such a simple line of reasoning. Right. Um, and it, it's so funny how we talk ourselves out of that so easily and so readily anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to point out, so being where you're at and having objectives, that coexists fine too. <laughs> right. Because it's, uh, it's in the how you go about the execution and bring, you know, bringing yourself to that goal. You plant a flag and you say, this represents the constraints that I want to embrace and make this thing. And I want the thing to, you know, this is why I'm doing it for me. And this is who I hope it serves or what have, well, all the, whatever you're putting into it. And then, I mean, you can light it on fire and beat yourself with it if you want, but like you could. Or um, just coexist with it. Now, Rob, I was all ready to just run frantically from one pure answer to the next with all the anxiety of the hopeful, hopeful aspirant. And you pointed out the interconnectivity of all these different things. And now I'm lost because I don't have the thing that I could say, this is the end all be all of all of my problems. <laughs> You just plug yours. Don't have to, you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my egg just running from one answer to the next. <laughs> nice. Don't tell me things are interdependent and overlap. That's nonsense. <laughs> Life doesn't work that way. Anxious, anxious answer sprints can be a fine workout. <laughs> don't bother me now. I'm doing my anxious answer sprints. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm capturing that one too. Anxious answer sprints. All right. Uh, what else do we got on our list? 
Um, well, so, I mean, this is all in, under, under the umbrella of hacking it to make, make the challenge uh, relevant to you and where you're at and where do you want to go next? That's uh, these dimensions, honestly, I think have a side effect of instead of sometimes you can make the challenge super hard, especially if you're increasing the volume of work um, that that's involved. If you're, if you're going to draw, you, you know, 50 bicycles in perspective every day, that's, that's going to hurt. You, you're going to get really good at it. But anyway, um, yeah. but then again, the constraints clarify, they can get rid of the friction where you're like, I know what I'm going to do when I'm going to do it. So it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to engage so that it's, um, yeah, it's hard to sustain it. You know, it's different eight hours versus 30 days, very different. But, um, if you pick the right constraints, if you, if you hack the event in a way that really serves you, you know, that it can be, I mean, you could make it maybe too easy Mm -hmm. if you, if challenge were part of your point. Right. Um, yeah, but just, I, I think that that mix and you could think about oh this shopping list of what you could make it and whatnot and maybe it would sound like we are only talking about increasing difficulty i i don't think that's the case i think choosing the the choosing the hacking it in a way that works for you is going to be finding a a way where it's more fit for you let's talk about the word fun real quick because i think that this this locks in really well with what you're describing is what makes things fun often is what like the there's a there's an element of difficulty that makes things fun. Um, fun is not easy, right? Um, and the example that we've talked about on the show, I use in my classroom all the time, is like if you plug in a video game and the moment you hit start, it says you won. You'd be you'd be like, what a ripoff! I, I don't want. Why did I pay sixty bucks for this? If you like, I I remember. Um, playing Street Fighter and when I was a, a, a teenager and, I, and against this one guy who was just like a champion button masher and he would just kill me every time. You know, like I would be like, round one, fight, I'm dead. Round two, fight, I'm dead. And he would just laugh hysterically. What? And I would just like, well, this is no fun because now the challenge is too high because I can't do anything. I can't even engage with you. And, I'm, and I looked at him like, is this really fun for you? I don't think it was. I think he was just like kind of a bully who liked to like make other people feel small. Uh, I think what makes it really... Oh, dude, and I just finished um, the Columbus Clippers, our local minor league team, just finished their uh, playoff season, and they're going to the, the, the final final round in, what is it, in Durham. And the last game before the playoffs, it was neck and neck up into the bottom of the eighth inning. And that was the best game I watched the entire season, right? Like the ones where they like scored like 10 points in the third inning. And then, like, the rest of it was just watching a no-hitter happen, right? Like, nobody's doing anything for the rest of the game. It's like, well, and I'm just riding this out, right? But it was when I thought we were going to lose up until the bottom of the eighth inning that, like, I was I was sweating. I was, like, my shirt was wet at the end of that game, you know? Uh, and, I, and, and Ann and I left the game. I was like, that was a great game. Oh, my gosh, you know? Because it was exciting because it, it felt like it could go anywhere, right? So I think when we say, like, well, do it for fun. Yeah, do it for fun. And part of what makes it fun is identifying what you'd like to, like what makes it challenging or difficult for you, even if it's a small one, right? Even if it's just like, I want to master this particular tool. I want to learn watercolor. I want to learn, you know, um, some kind of like computer coloring. And I'm just going to do the ink drawing as an excuse to try out different coloring techniques in a low risk way where I'm not worried about creating anything shippable. Maybe I'll make something shippable. But the main thing is, is to check in every day on this thing. That can be fun. Exactly. Uh, one one way I have ratcheted up or down difficulty is by working on a working on physically small or large canvases, right, or pieces of paper. So if you if you do the whole, uh, you know, you cut a, you, I cut a piece of cardstock in half. I mean, that's a little less than 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 the normal page. That makes the challenge less. If you cut it in half again, now it's about the size of a mini comic page. If you cut it in half again, now it's like so. The amount of information and the amount of space to cover and make marks on is way smaller. So it's a uh, that's it's one way to turn the difficulty up or down too. Um, but then. And, and that's what I wanted. So sometimes I want to, I, I, I would do that to take a break. You can tell different years where I've participated and I've, um, I'll, I'll use that, the paper bigness as a way to, to chill out or get, you know, amped up. 
And, um, but yeah, there's always, there's something, there's something about it that, uh, and, and like why you pick that challenging thing. I mean, that's, that's really, that's all you, uh, the, the sort of venue has been set up and you, and if you're, you're saying, you're saying, yeah, I want to go do that one. I'm going to do this creative challenge or that one or invent your own. Um, you know, you set up the venue, but you still get to really, yeah, pick and choose. And I, I do like, I like how you're pointing out how fun. Um, let's see. So Jane McGonigal wrote a book called, um, let's see, reality is broken. I've mentioned it probably more than any other book on any po- <laughs> as I've podcast. I, I, I read that book and then I started podcasting. So, and haven't read anything since. No. Um, anyway, Reality is Broken is a pretty awesome book. <laughs> Thankfully, I've read other books since. Um, but uh, the the idea of 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 games, what makes them interesting, compelling, and whatnot, is covered super well in there. And the in and I think Jane's definition of a game is that it's an optional challenge. Let's see. Let's see it's an optional challenge that that continues to maintain some amount of difficulty or something like that. I'm, yeah. I'm totally whiffing it because it's been a long time. But, and and you, you nailed it though with what, you know, of, of bringing up that game aspect is, is that's a good signal to think about like, well, what do you like in games? Do you like, I mean, are you a Demon Souls player? I, I mm-hmm. think you're going to try to make a 30 page comic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what would be the, the analogy for Mario Kart? Mm. Uh, let's see. You opened the door on this one, Rob. Yeah, I know I did. All right, so Mario Kart, you're going to well, okay. What what level trophy are you trying to get at? What CC level? So all right, so like 100 uh, CC um, platinum trophy. You're getting. You're thinking about. You're 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 doing at least the 20, 20 to twenty four page comic. Okay. Eight page comic would be fifty cc. Oh yeah, eight page eight page comic is getting platinum trophy in like f- five fifty cc's. Okay. <laughs> I guess there's a Mario Kart economy for fun and <laughs> art uh, art pro- productivity. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, I think I think that that's worth looking at is like, what do you enjoy about games and what particular kinds of difficulty do you enjoy? Um, And yeah, like some people like, well, when I was at your house, uh, like a couple years ago and we were playing, um, was it Overwatch? Yeah. And I was very quickly overwhelmed by how much was happening in the game right and like i was like oh this is gonna take a lot of getting used to because so much is happening all the time and like you're meant to move around really fast and like oh this is not the kind of gaming i'm used to you know i'm used to like very slow i can like look at the landscape and like really uh, uh, process everything i'm not a, a fast gamer right i'm a very slow i like to experience the um the world um more though more so than uh, accomplished skill maneuvering. Um, and this is like the thing that like made me so sad about Metroid other M was like, there was so much fighting that was like melee fighting. I'm like, Oh, that's not what I'm in it for. And so I handed it off to some younger students. And I'm like, can you fit, finish this level for me so I can go on to do the interesting stuff that I like? Uh, they, they were like, yeah, then did it in five seconds. And I'm like, cool. I can go back to world exploring anyway. Um, but yeah, like I think that's worth analyzing a little bit to ask yourself, like and at least to acknowledge that, like yeah, difficulty is what adds the flavor to the thing, not in this martial Spartan spear rattling sense, but in the sense of like, well, that like skill acquisition comes through like a little bit of challenge, um, mm-hmm. getting slightly uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but not you know ridiculously uncomfortable. Yeah. That's. Uh, you know, unless you're into that, I guess, but if you are, yeah. And we have both played in that pool, right? We've both in- enjoyed getting way in over our heads and like try to come out to the side and like it with a spirit of yeah, the stakes are pretty low. This is just a creative challenge. It's not like there's no money on the line. Um, there's time on the line, but that time is like also like the pay, the payoff is that there's going to be some kind of skill acquisition or at least some learning that happens through getting overwhelmed this way. Right. But, um, but I, I think having, it, this is a good opportunity in mid to late September 
to have a conversation with yourself uh, about like what what kinds of difficulty do you enjoy? Look at like the past projects you've done. Look at the games you play. Look at the things that you've engaged with in a learning capacity and see if you can come to some sense of like, well, I like this much difficulty. How can I hack the game to add that much difficulty to it so that it remains fun for me? Um, and so that I get maximum benefit out of it. I like that. It's interesting. I think that's a new, that's a new angle that, uh, I mean, we have, we have talked about creative challenges as literally the main topic of at least four or five episodes Yeah, out of, you know, 200, 85. It's a small percentage, but yes, we do check in on this almost every year, yep. if not multiple times a year. Um, cool. I'm glad we found some new ground to, to, to tread on that. Um, are we at another break time before we do I, final thought? Yeah. I'm wondering if we have, have, uh, yeah, brought this to final thought. I'm feeling like we're, we're getting there. Okay, cool. Well then how about we take one more break talk about some other people who make this show possible and then we'll conclude with some thoughts on like uh, rounding off like what wh- what are some final things to think about in terms of creative challenge season but before we do that we got to thank some other people who make this show possible those people happen to be us we make the show possible we make lots of things and we bring those thoughts that that occur to us to this show and the thing that i make that i hope you will check out it's called Boulder and Fleet Adventures for Hire, Mining for Trouble, and you can find it at books.jdros.com. And it's the story of two best friends, a bear and a bird, who go off on adventures together, you know, trying to make a living helping people and uh, get into all sorts of trouble where, like, when you're an adventurer, that usually means that there's going to be conflict. And the bird's like, hey, that's no problem because I'm, like, going to be the most famous adventurer of all because I'm an awesome fighter. He's like, and I've got this big, strong bear who's going to help me. The bear says, uh-oh, what's that? What's wrong? And the bear says, I don't like hurting people. I don't like fighting. I'd rather make friends. Well, that's going to make things difficult uh, for becoming the most famous adventurers of all time. And you can read this 92-page full color story at books.jdros.com you can get it in print and you can get it in digital rob what do you make that you want to tell people about well i'm i'm in the this launching time of a a uh, of a new business that uh my wife and i have have created and it's uh it's all about coaching and each of us has a different kind of, so, you know, it's, it's like professional coaching, life coaching kind of things. It's not therapy. It's like building and working toward this, the, 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 the things you're working toward next, what keeps you up at night kind of stuff. And, and, and uh, how can you navigate that? And so we're both coaches with, with uh, different areas of focus. I happen to focus on like collaboration and professional choices. I mean, you're coming up to like a big decision of different opportunities. Um, I can, you know, I can work alongside you for nav- navigating that kind of thing. Essentially, um, like one of the, the key groups I, I work with is are like product makers and leaders and to help them build uh, research infused teams, you know, using evidence to dri- drive decisions. That's a new thing in lots of places. Also, uh, sometimes you're in, when you're in a big organization, uh, you need those that to be sustainably scrappy as an agent for positive change can help with that. And just that general thing of, of, making really meaningful products for your audience. And that, that's, those are like key themes for the coaching that I do. And uh, you can learn all about that. Um, really easy URL to get there is uh, robcoach.me. Hmm. Robcoach.me. And you can see the and, whole site. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. For, forgot to mention a pretty important thing. So getting into coaching, uh, you may not know what it's all about. Uh, I do offer um, a free discovery half hour session and it's easy to sign up. Just go to robcoach.me and uh, click on the uh, schedule a session button. Great. And, and the, the main site for both Rob and Kate is shieldstenzinger.com. These will be linked in the show notes. And another thing that's going to be linked in the show notes is a brand new thing that we just launched last week. And Rob, that is our discord. Lean into art has a discord. Hmm. What? What's a, di- what's a Discord? Twitch? Now we've got a Discord? What's going oh on? Oh my. We, we, we're, we're just uh, we're going to slowly convert from gentle bros to dude bros. You just watch it happen, Rob. <laughs> sure. I'm like a weird dude, dude bro. Like <laughs> when the, I don't know, the moon looks like the Xbox logo, I'll go. <laughs> 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 when the moon looks like the Xbox logo. 
And then you fortunate. hear that weird voice say PlayStation. And then, yep, he howls and he starts chasing all sorts of vehicles. Uh, <laughs> but what is the Discord before we get too off, off topic? All right. So so the Discord is actually, so it's a pretty cool tool if you haven't come across it. If you're uh, if you're into gaming, you, you, it's Discord grew up and is very popular in that in that crowd and serves very well. But it's basically a collaborative chat tool that it feels like a like a fully fledged you know social networky thing but it's but it's a it's more intimate right it's not this you know thousands and millions of people kind of place it's you know just, just a few dozen it's or the you know whatever grow however big the lean into art community is it's way smaller than twitter so um so yeah it's this place where um you can come and anyone can sign up and you know partake in the in, like feedback comments on episodes and requesting uh, topics, right? You have topic questions, topic ideas. Totally want to hear that. You have reactions to episodes. Totally want to hear that. That's awesome. We've got channels for that when you when you um, sign up. We have special channels though, or chat rooms, whatever they are. I don't know. They're a hashtag something, right? And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an expert, not really. <laughs> so, but good enough where we have one set up and you know, actually Jersey did most set up, but anyway, <laughs> it, uh, let's see, I'm trying to launch discord while I'm doing this description, but so we have a few chat rooms that are, that, uh, are an example of like honoring things that are important to our community. So things like castle level up, if you're working on something that's, that is particularly, um, you want real, um, you know, it's supportive, not harsh, but like feedback that where it helps you dig deeper and, and, uh, and it, with the intent to improve your work. Yeah. Go do a post to castle level up. Um, the leaners also have a social channel, just super mellow, like nice place to go say hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. Low stakes. It's wonderful to be able to post stuff in a low stakes environment. Um, and then, uh, what is the other one? Oh, gentle town. Yeah. That's like, that's the encouragement channel. So it's like, hey, I drew this thing. And people are like, yeah, you drew that. It's awesome. And Because it's okay to ask for a high five. We shouldn't feel any shame about that. Right on. So that's what we are here. I mean, so the flavor of our conversation in, in the show, we show up there. Um, it's, it's, it's been going pretty well. I've, I'm, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you set it up. Thanks. Well, well, we did it together. You you were the one who coined the terms Castle Level Up in Gentletown too. Like those are the most robust Rob names I've ever I've ever heard. So, but yes, we will put a, a, an invite link in the show notes for this episode and on the Twitch channel so you can join. But like we said, so you'll be able to do comment on episodes uh, and uh, you know ask for different topics that you'd like us to dis to discuss. But if you're a Patreon supporter, then those those other channels, the Castle Level Up, Gentletown, and the Social Channel, and those will be a great place to hang out during the season of creative challenges to you know give each other support and high fives and and so on yeah well rob started thinking <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure i know where i'm going to post my stuff now yeah yeah and, and i've already been like using as an opportunity to share some in progress and you know uh in development work that i w wouldn't share any place else because this is a private place where only leaners are hanging out so mm -hmm. yep the lean into our discord thanks everybody who has been uh you know, who showed up and have been interacting in a positive way in that place. It's awesome. Okay. Final thought. What are we thinking? So, all right. So I've got this, I've, I'm thinking about what I'm going to try, why I'm going to try it. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I, I feel like at today, I do want to go ahead and participate in Inktober, but I don't know if, if, if in the crowded Inktober space, if that's where I want to be. So like participating, it's, you know, maybe I'd post something now and then publicly, but we'll see because there's really a whole lot of uh, big feelings going on about creative challenges too. And, uh, but there's big feelings about everything right now and it's understandable. And everyone's yeah. at where they're at, and it's all right. Yeah. But I don't have to go there. <laughs> so I might not go there. <laughs> and that's, but I, at the same time, yeah, I like creative challenges. And, I, I'm, and I'm, I'm formulating what I, what I want to do, which 
It isn't finished. I mean, I, I think I might try to bring one of my existing projects to a more finished state. So it would probably be focusing on a zine or something, or maybe, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what exactly. Um, like the facial expressions zine would be a pretty obvious one. Uh, I've got a couple posters I've been working on. They're you know, super back burner projects, but like taking that kind of th like an existing project to the next level might be a good goal for me. And where I do it and how I go about it, I just, I want it to be, I want it to be fun and mellow. And if there's a fun, big, mellow party, I might show up there for a little bit, but I'm going to cut fun, a fun, big, mellow party. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's probably not going to stay mellow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Cause then John Belushi comes in and screams and everybody's got togas and who knows what happens next. And motorcycle comes to the front door. Um, I am thinking about, based on what you just said, okay, so I've got a theme. I've got a couple different themes that have run through my creative pro uh, challenges over the years is there has been asset and idea generation, e exploring something to develop a finished thing down the road. And then there's been the rapid prototyping of something in the case of the 24-page mini comic, um, all in the name of shipping something. But let's go back not, and invest. Not to but sorry, dude, like you're not prototyping as much. You're getting, you're producing. Like, okay, that's a fine. Product. Fine. Yes, sure. That's, it, this is a product. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go along with you. But so it's, it's it, all in the name of shipping something. But there's also been projects that I've done, like say this one, where I was, where the, the, the 2015 ink drawings with crayons and um, where there was no product the product revealed itself through the making of the thing. So as I look at all those different sectors, right? You've got idea generation, you've got product shipping, and then you've got like thing that may not be a product yet. Now I'm thinking about how this could be an opportunity. I've got a pitch that I want to finish before the end of the year, and I just don't know where it can fit into my schedule. What if I treat this Inktober as I generate the ideas and the character designs for the pitch and then I draw the sample pages for the pitch over the course of Inktober. And because it's for a pitch, because it's something that I don't want to share with the entire world just yet, maybe I won't share it that publicly either. Maybe it'll only go into my Patreon and on the Lean Into Art Discord, right? But mm -hmm. the goal, like, can I structure it out? Can I write out a Gantt chart or a, uh, a map of the thing where it's like, okay, by this day in Inktober, I'm done doing character generation and character designs. And then by this day, I'm, I'm full on doing the inked pages for the pitch. And by this day, I'm finishing up the final touches on like the, the colors and whatnot to, um, so that by the end of the month, I'll have, you know, an eight to nine page comics pitch to send out to publishers. It's pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's another take on, on a, on a, a useful, um, like it's, it's a, you're, you're creating professional outcomes. You're creating things that contribute to your, business That's, yeah. that seems like a theme overall um directly right not indirectly saying like oh mm -hmm. that's yes i'm refining my skills and improving what have you uh you you're you do tend to it seems do things that that have like impact on on you as an independent creator the the things that i want to level up on artistically are things that i'm not going to be able to do in the context of a challenge like inktober like i i want to start going to life drawing classes i want to go back to doing like gesture drawing in a classroom environment and level up in those kinds of ways. Um, I just signed up for a writing course with Alex Simmons, uh, which if you follow Alex Simmons on Instagram, he's still got open enrollment for his series of writing workshops. Like those are things that I feel like I need a more formal environment to do the leveling up. This kind of creative challenge, I, I'm having difficulty finding the one thing I want to level up on. So I default to, well, how can I do generation of uh, material for my business? Yeah, like you said. That is my that's my idiosyncratic need for the, from the thing. Everybody's needs are going to be different. So I'm not I like suggesting that, I admire that, yeah. that as a constraint. And uh, mm. oh. did a rough, Can you scoot over just a little here? bit this way? Ooh. There we go. Idea generation, product shipping and product explore. Yeah. Yeah. 
And look at you generating like the, the icons so fast. It's like Product Explorer. So we got all these map icons. And idea generation is a big cloud. Uh, this is a, this is a sketch noter over here, everybody. It's a sketch noter. You should sign up for that's his. Trademark. I might get sued. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, he, <laughs> a guy who generates ideas in sketch form and in text form, very clumsily <laughs> worded so as not to infringe on any trademarks. But you should sign up for his class at robcoach.me. <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ring. That, that's got a good ring to it. As good as sketch noting. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Coach that me. Trademark. <laughs> that that's my sketch note. No. I just Rob I noted. Love it. I me. love that book and everything. I'm just I, I am joking. It's it's as yeah. like awesome. Mike Rody. Uh, it's the uh, the sketch note handbook. Highly recommend it. All right. Well, Rob, I think we did a podcast, and you know, uh, good journey to you on your creative challenge. Um, <laughs> sure. We have our packs, and we're on the path, and there's a fork in the road. Yeah. You're going to product town. I'm going to don't fall off the edge town. <laughs> it's like the national parks. It's like they just have a bunch of sides say, like, don't, just don't, don't, don't take a selfie over here for God's sakes. We got the icon of the falling dude. Just don't, just look at the scenery. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we record the show on Thursdays uh, at noon Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central, and we stream it live on twitch.tv. And then we collect that as a podcast at patre- patreon.com slash lena to art and lena to art.com and on YouTube as well. Uh, we'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of lena to art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.